Hello, everyone, and welcome to this session on um, the Trimble MX50. This is an introduction to the Trimble MX50 for Esri users. So Trimble has a portfolio of mobile mapping products, um, starting with our flagship, the MX9, which is um, designed for survey and engineering applications. And then we have our new product, um, the Trimble MX50, which has been launched uh, recently for mapping and asset management um, applications. And the MX7, which is an image-based system with no point clouds for those that are interested in uh, collecting imagery for photogrammetry and asset inspection. So this is our new product, the Trimble MX50 was launched um, on the 12th of July. Um, and we're gonna specifically focus on this product during this uh, session. So just a little bit more about our portfolio. Um, Trimble has a, a portfolio of mobile mapping products. Um, with a variety of applications and price points that we believe would be interesting for many different kinds of user. Um, if you look at the um, app application, uh, as mentioned previously, MX9 for high-end surveying and engineering, the MX50 um, for asset management and mapping, and the MX7 um, for imaging for those people that want to collect a type of uh, street view uh, kind of workflow. If you look at the columns uh, just in from the right hand side, um, indicates our software and workflow for each of these products. And an important point to make is that we have the same workflow across our portfolio. So no matter which product um, a customer selects, the workflow is the same. This is very important because it means that, um, for example, somebody that has an MX-9 and would like to now add an MX-50 to their fleet, they um, don't need to change their workflow. It's exactly the same as it was with an MX-9 or indeed an MX-7. So a little bit more about the workflow. Um, so we consider four steps in the whole uh, field to finish workflow, capture, process, extract, and share. Capture, process, extract, and share. Um, these are the four steps in our workflow. And uh, just to indicate what that means in practical terms, <clears throat> So in the field, we have um, our TMI field capture software um, for all three products. Um, customer simply needs to connect to whichever system it is with the mobile device. Usually it's a uh, tablet and there's a very simple process for connecting with a web browser to the system and simply capturing the data required in the field. That data, once the uh, mobile mapping mission is complete, is transferred to the office, and it goes primarily to begin with in Trimble Business Center or TBC. And in that uh, software, People can do all the basic stuff they need to do um, with the raw data so they can process the trajectory, generate point clouds, do things like registration, run to run or, or registration to control points, um, point cloud colorization, image blurring, and um, then exporting the data, process data. Then when the data requires extraction, there are actually two different workflows 
for customers primarily interested in survey and engineering deliverable deliverables. Um, much of this can be done by continuing in TBC. Uh, TBC, uh, the data can be integrated with data from other sensors um, and can be used for generating uh, things like ground models, um, profiles, cross sections, all that kind of uh, survey and engineering type deliverable. If the workflow is more um, asset management and GIS based, the uh, user can take the data into our Trimble TMX software. And uh, TMX has a, a very nice workflow for working with GIS kind of solution with uh, you know features, attributes, um, creating uh, topological uh, data structures, um, or even importing schemas, etc., from existing uh, existing geodatabases. And then finally, and a very important point in the process, um, sharing the data to get the most value out of the uh, collected mobile mapping data. Um, it makes a lot of sense to share the data widely across your organization to really leverage the true value of the data. And this can be done by publishing the data and sharing it simply in a web browser um, by sending people a URL um, so non-expert users can access the data and, um, and, and really leverage the value of the data across your organization. So I come back to these four steps again, capture, process, extract, and share. Uh, just um, have a look at that in a bit more detail detail with some examples so this is our field software which is uh, normally running on a um, tablet device um, simply in a web browser so here we're in google chrome connected to the device itself very simple user interface for operating the system um, can move between different windows uh, to get a preview of images, point clouds, navigation data. So this is the point cloud um, option where you can see the point cloud as it's being collected. Um, and then when a customer is ready to start recording data, um, they can simply start that run by pressing the button in the bottom right and it tends to red, which means you're in recording mode and the data um, is recorded. When you want to stop a run, you simply press the red button in the bottom right corner. Process, so this is some data that has been processed and is in Trimble Business Center. So all the steps have been followed here to generate this point cloud so trajectory has been processed, uh, scans have been generated, uh, runs have been registered to each other, um, the point cloud has been automatically classified, and uh, the point cloud has been colorized using the imagery. Extracting the data, so this is an example of TMX. This is just one example of the kind of thing you can do in TMX. There are plenty of different data extraction options in TMX from manual workflows to semi-automated workflows. Uh, the example I'm showing you here is a, a pole detector for automatically detecting poles so in the top window i'm creating an area of interest um, and i want this um, automated routine to look for uh, poles within that area so you'll see in the top window it starts to 
populate the poles that are detected and this is uh, automatic. Then if we review in the bottom window, do a kind of virtual drive through of uh, the environment, you'll see that the uh, poles detected and displayed in the image view also. And then sharing the data, this is just an example of um, data that's been published on the internet um, and viewed in a web browser. And this can be shared um, with uh, anybody that has access. Um, of course, there are um, controls within this uh, product to control access. Um, but if you, can, if you send somebody a URL, they can access the data in a web browser and even do things, basic things like um, take measurements from the scene. So a little bit more about the MX50 um, product, which is new. So the MX50 is a practical mobile mapping system for asset management mapping and road maintenance. It builds on our experience in mobile mapping. Um, one of the main features here is that for the first time in a mobile mapping system, we're using Trimble designed and, and manufactured um, lasers on this product. So there's no third party lasers. These are Trimble lasers. Um, there's a lady, uh, 360 degree camera and a, um, a Planix GNSS IMU unit. And uh, we believe the system to be uh, significantly more cost effective to the end user. So here's the system overview. And these are uh, the components of the system. So there's the sensor head itself, a roof rack, a control unit, and a power unit. There are two laser um, profilers arranged in a butterfly configuration, each measuring at 480 kilohertz and rotating each at 120 scans per second. We have a 360 degree um, spherical camera we have um, GAMS, which is a secondary antenna for aiding the heading determination of the system. And um, yeah, there's a single cable connection from um, the vehicle to the sensor head. So this is what the system looks like in uh, general terms. And this is, these are the components. So there's a roof rack, which is supplied with the system. Then there's the sensor head itself with its uh, 360 degree camera lasers and uh, IMU GNSS system. Secondary antenna for aiding with heading um, can be installed. Uh, there's an optional DMI, which is a distance measuring instrument that fits to the uh, wheel of a vehicle um, that's optional um, but can be recommended in GNS -S challenged environments let's say inside the vehicle we normally recommend installing a secondary battery to the main car power supply and this is connected to our power unit which connects to our control unit and that connects to the sensor head itself. We create a Wi-Fi hotspot within the vehicle and then the user connects with their own device, whether it's a tablet or a PC, to the system and operates the system from a web browser. 
some of the specs of the system. There's quite a lot of information here, but I'm just going to highlight the uh, main features. So we have two laser scanners and a ladybug camera. We have the Planix AP20. The weight of the system is um, 23 kilograms, which is um, significantly lighter than some of the previous systems. Uh, the effective measurement rate is two times 480 kilohertz uh, with a scan speed of 120 scans per second. What does this mean? Effectively, this means that we're collecting approximately 1 million points per second. The maximum range of the system um, in terms of the lasers is 80 meters. A little bit look at uh, have a look at some of the data that we have um, been able to collect using the MX50. So we have this well-defined um, data corridor. So I mentioned that um, the range is 80 meters. Um, so this means that we're getting approximately 160 meter wide um, corridor, 80 meters either side of the vehicle's trajectory. Um, this is a hard cutoff at 80 meters. It's not like a potential maximum range. It's actually a hard cutoff at 80 meters. Um, and it means that we get a very clean data corridor. So we, we don't have all long distance points, um, which could be less accurate because they're very much dependent on um, the accuracy of the heading determination. So we really focused on a concentrated area of interest of this 160 meter um, data corridor. And um, to some extent, this is kind of a, a nice feature, almost an advantage. Here's a look at some of the data. Um, here's a highway, a colorized point cloud of a dual carriageway. This is a street scene in Germany. Um, this is the point cloud, colorized point cloud, not an image. Um, you see how uh, high quality and um, and good the data is in general, with very little noise. Uh, demonstration here of the oops, sorry, of the um, kind of accuracy of the data. Um, so the top here running from the right to the left is um, are four runs actually, four independent runs along the road. Um, so all the point clouds are on top of each other for the four runs. Um, and then I've put a cutting plane um, through that as indicated by the yellow rectangle in the top. And I'm going to zoom in here on these four point clouds from these four runs on the road surface. So the colors here represent different uh, point clouds from the different runs. As you can see, they're all mixed up. Um, it's all fairly random. And by measuring kind of the depth, if you like, of this road surface, Basically, it's giving me uh, an indication of the consistency in the vertical between these four runs. Um, so if I measure that, you'll see that um, it's about nine millimeters. So we're getting about a nine millimeter in the extreme, by the way, uh, repeatability between these four point clouds. That's why we believe this uh, this product will be interesting for people that are interested in measuring road surfaces because we're getting very uh, very good data on road surface. So the data from an MX50 is clear, it's precise, it's, it can be used for survey, and it can be used for GIS. Here's another demonstration of the fidelity of the data. So we put some objects in the road. Um, 
piece of cardboard, some pieces of foam, uh, a carpet tile, and a uh, concrete slab, um, and drove over them um, with the MX50, and this is the resulting point cloud. Um, you can see the objects appear very clearly, and um, we were evil, even able to measure the depth of the carpet tile. Um, MX50 data, a small project we did um, close to our office in Germany. Um, it's a road intersection, quite a complicated one. Uh, there's a roundabout with uh, several different entrance roads and actually a flyover, the cyan colored um, trajectory across the center is actually a flyover. So reasonably complex road junction and I'd like to share some of the data we got from this project with you. So um, this is kind of the size of the project. It's approximately uh, 1300 meters by about 570 meters. There are 11 runs. There's a flyover and the total distance was 5.7 kilometers. So if you were to add all the runs together, it's about 5.7 kilometers. Um, the time it took to do this survey was um, 50 minutes. So very fast way of doing a survey, that's for sure. In fact, I just want to share with you something from my own experience. I did a similar way back in my young surveyor days um, total stations had been invented in 1987 and we were using a total station. Uh, but it's a similarly complex road intersection in West London um, that we undertook with a total station. And this project, due to its complexity, the busyness of traffic, etc., this project took us two months. So in the course of uh, my career, we've gone from two months to 50 minutes. So we registered the pro um, runs together in this project and classified the point cloud into buildings, ground, high vegetation, post signs and power lines. This is a feature in Trumbull Business Center where the point cloud can be automatically classified into these five regions and then the data was exported to TMX. So let's have a look at the data. So this is the colorized point cloud. <clears throat> you see the vegetation and the ground surface very clearly indicated. Um, being able to switch off different um, components of the point cloud to get to the ground, so just to have the ground switched on is very, very useful or, for example, creating a DTM of the ground surface to be able to um, filter the data in that way is very useful. Here's a view of the resulting colorized point cloud. Another view, you see the flyover going uh, across the center of the project. This is a view on the roundabout section of the um, project where the vehicle's probably traveling about 40 kilometers of an hour, an hour going around this section. And this just helps you to understand what the data looks like. Um, you'll see the grid pattern created by the two lasers in the butterfly configuration gives us a, around about an eight centimeter grid pattern on the road surface itself. You'll also notice the data on the road surface is very clean and there's very little noise. Again, just another example of a road sign that uh, I'm just looking at independently here. There are three runs here. So again, we'd um, expect to see 
some misalignment between the three runs, maybe some noise around this point cloud from the different uh, runs that have points um, on this road sign. Um, but if you look at the image on the right hand side, just looking side on, you'll see uh, you can all you, well, you could measure the thickness of the road sign, and uh, there's very little no noise very good agreement between the three runs or the three point clouds. Um, just want to say a little bit about um, Trimble MX Publisher and some of the plugins that are available. We have several plugins. Um, I want to focus on the uh, Esri plugins um, here. So different projects uh, are basically um, created and become publications. Um, and these can be published over the internet and um, shared in a web browser. And we have a plugin for um, ArcGIS or ArcMap. And I want to just share with you some of the features of that. So here we have our, on the right window, we have our map and I'm connecting our plugin um, to our publisher platform with a project. So now we have a connection between our map, the Esri world and the TMX publisher, the Trimble world on the right. And now I'm going to uh, extract some points. You'll see the vehicle trajectory is displayed on the uh, in our map. And I'm extracting now some road sign on the right hand side from the uh, publisher platform. And you see that is been extracted, created, and saved um, interactively to ArcMap online. Uh, just moving along to another road sign, extract it in uh, Tr Trimble MX Publisher. It appears in ArcMap on the left-hand side, and I can save it to the ArcMap database. Now I'm going to do something similar, but uh, this time extracting a line feature. So it's actually the uh, road marking, the line across the left-hand side of this lane. So you see this has been extracted in the point cloud in uh, MX Publisher, but you'll see the line is appearing in ArcMap um, and is extracted to a layer in ArcMap and can be saved to the ArcMap database. So there's this constant uh, real-time connection between um, TMX Publisher and um, ArcMap Online. We can also just show you some other features available in uh, Publisher. We can add annotations. Um, so here, we're just adding an annotation to say, here's a bridge, appears in the point cloud and in the image. Um, and then I just want to show you some uh, measurement tools as well. Um, so if I pick up uh, the measurement tools, Just show you one for doing uh, offset measurements. So here, measuring a kind of right angle triangle with slope distance, uh, horizontal and vertical offsets to that point on the bridge. And then finally, um, measuring an offset, measuring this weight lane width here uh, simply by measuring an offset. So I hope that gives you an idea of how um, mobile mapping data using TMX Publisher can be used um, very smoothly in the Esri world. Thank you. That concludes this presentation. Thanks for watching.